With Siri still sucking and Google not knowing how to properly implement Gemini within a voice assistant, startups are quickly building AI devices. But why do we need a new product? Can't it just be an app? From a startup's perspective, this is a unique opportunity to take on giants like Apple, Google, and Samsung with a gap in the market created by AI. See, AI models can process context through images, videos, text, and speech. So having a device that is sitting in your pocket for 50 to 70% of your day is a waste of opportunity. So now we have a trend of AI pendants. Products like the $99 Compass want to record your conversations and act as a summarizer so that later, if you need to recall something, you can just access your compiled conversation via the mobile app. Tone is another pendant at $299 and it's marketed to act as your second brain. And there's also Tab at $600 that thinks of itself as a friendship companion that mimics the movie Her. So do these justify a new product yet? So far, these have just been privacy violations all over the place. And smartphones have undergone through massive consumer battles to be able to get your data and sell it. Only for Tab's founder to come and save this? Yeah, I'm not comfortable. I'm them. But there's more than pendants. We all know the AI pin with a laser projector, a camera, and a microphone. You can tap to interact with it, and it has a lot of privacy features. There's also the Rabbit R1, the pocket device that has similar features to the AI pin, except with a screen. Here again, the question of, can this just be on my phone, is still valid. However, startups and developers have been bullied over the years because Apple and Google have been taking an unjust 30% cut for in-app purchases, they enforce rules to enforce those fees, and there are so many more rules on top. So, a new device that can come over and take over the market might be beneficial to builders, at least in the short term. So, why should the consumer care exactly? Directly, consumers might not benefit from this, but but if developers and startups have more freedom to build what they actually want to build and they don't need to circumvent the rules to be able to publish their apps on an app store, then apps might look simpler for us and might do more for us in the future. So then, what's the ideal form factor for AI devices? Well, we've seen the pendants. So far, all of them only capture audio and they're usually paired with an app or service on your phone and it's usually always connected to something like GPT-4. Then we have multimodal devices, devices that have a camera and a microphone. By unlocking the ability to see, these devices can unlock more capabilities to interact with your environment. Is this outfit appropriate for a cocktail party? Based on the image, the outfit appears to be more casual and may not be appropriate for a cocktail party. It is recommended to wear a more formal attire such as a suit for a cocktail party. So if we pit audio-only devices against multimodal devices, there's a significant difference in purposes for each device, but there's also a significant leap in price points. While audio can record only audio, multimodal can record audio and video, as well as take pictures. Audio only have no concern for your privacy so far, while on multimodal devices, the AI pin has a safety light and the Rabbit R1 works similar to a phone, which makes it more obvious if you're being recorded. Audio-only devices mostly rely on external apps, but on the AI pin side, it does have a mobile and web app, and the Rabbit R1 seems to be functioning independently. Audio-only devices have hinted at agents, but have not really demoed a proper agent functionality so far, while the Rabbit R1 and Humane have already demonstrated agent-like features, such as modifications to your Excel sheets. And for audio-only devices, the price range is between $59 to $600, with utility diminishing the higher the price goes, and most of the products rely on a monthly subscription. While on multimodal devices, the price range is between $200 to $800, with the AI pin pushing the price range to the upper limit and has a subscription on top of it. But in the audio-only category, Open Interpreter comes in and challenges that entire category completely. It connects to your computer or laptop, and it answers any question that you ask it by researching it by your web browser or by searching through your computer. It also has a speaker, and it can perform tasks for you from your computer just by listening to input. The next sunny day is on March 9th. Great. Am I doing anything on that day? Let me check your calendar. You have no events scheduled for March 9th. And it only costs $99. If you want to see more about Open Interpreter and the O1, click subscribe because I already purchased the device and I'll review it when it comes to my door. But is it fair for me to pit these devices against each other? They can all coexist, but people have a limited budget. So we'll have to see how much these cameras are being put to use by customers and to what extent. 
I also want to see how the limitations of AI pendants actually helps customers. But at the end of the day, usually only one or two of these companies will succeed and the rest will probably need to shut down or pivot to something else. So what happens when an AI device beats Apple and Google to the market? Well then, scaling is the next part. You make an SDK available, developers join, your product becomes more expansive and more useful to customers. But now your investors want to see an upward graph, a graph that's going up every quarter. Or maybe you're a public company and you need to maintain your stock price. So you'll need to make concessions somewhere. So you decide to impose a developer fee. Maybe you increase token pricing so that your consumers have to pay more. Now edge computing becomes available and now you have to upgrade your device to make it better and faster and you need more money and resources so you'll need to tax someone. What I'm saying is that the original vision of beating big tech to something in the market isn't really the most noble story. Tech companies still have to make faux pas and concessions while they're building and they're probably going to be taxing someone at some point to be able to please some shareholder, some investor or whoever. Screwing over your developer company becomes a very valid option when you don't really need to listen to anyone, you're big enough and you just need more money. So whatever David and Goliath story you might be hearing at the beginning about any of these startups, it might be fun right now. But once they become big tech, they will be acting like big tech. Let's keep in mind that Apple and Google were also startups at some point. But what happens if big tech actually beats one of the startups to the AI hardware space? So the thing is, I don't expect Apple or Google to be making any change to their lineup of products in the next 5 to 10 years unless one of these startups produces a banger. Apple already has the Apple Watch, the iPhone, and with the Vision Pro, their current vision is to just reduce the size of it so that it just appears as regular sunglasses or spectacles on your face. And that's where they'll be implementing all the AI technology in the future probably. So it wouldn't really make sense for them to be nudging that vision based on the amount of investment that they put in all these lineups. But once a consumer starts to ask themselves the question of is the Apple Watch more worth it or is the AI pin more worth it? then maybe Apple might feel more of an incentive to look into what is making that AI pin so special and maybe they'll either buy Humane, the company, which will be full circle for them, or they just try to build it in-house. So Josh Miller tweeted out saying that startups have 18 to 24 months to do something. And I kind of agree. Startups have 18 to 24 months to basically battle it out amongst each other so that the actual ideal product comes out on top. The first AI device that goes viral, gets mass adopted, will be setting the standard for what these devices will look like and what they do for us in the future. I personally think that of all these devices, the only device that has a chance of succeeding is a device that doesn't necessarily compete with a phone, but it does something totally different that a phone has never even dared to do. And for me, the only one that qualifies for this is the open interpreter. I might be wrong, we are very early into this journey, so may the best vision win. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and don't forget to like it. I'll see you next week.